All right, so you guys can see, I have this is the back spring right here for the slip joint, and I have my two holes here. This one's for the pivot, and then this one is to lock it down so this back part doesn't move up, so that it stays rigid, and that this part will spring up once it's heat treated right on the back. But you can see, I left a bunch of extra material back here, so what I'm gonna do is clean up this part right here, all with the belt grinder. Clean up this part back here and right up to the pivot. And at the pivot, I'm not going to stop cleaning it up with the belt grinder. I'm going to leave this all this extra material material here. So what happens is when I put it in, I now have this extra material. So when I set the spring, that means I put tension on the spring. I'm going to bend it down during heat treat so that it's going to push up against the back side of the blade. So the way it works, they lock down. This has to keep pressure to push down to keep it locked in place. So, I'm going to stop cleaning it up here and leave this extra material. So when it pushes down below the liner, I can come back and grind it flat. So then I don't have an awkward gap where the spring is not flush with the back of the liner. You can see...
Alright guys, so what you didn't see a lot of in the video was a lot of the adjustments and I'm making a lot of adjustments uh, filing off little bits of the uh, the back part of the blade, the pivot, back spring and I'm just cleaning up the, uh, gar the liners for the most part. So this is my uh, first folding knife I've ever made. It's a slip joint style. And this is just, I guess, a prototype of a design. And what you're seeing is the preheat treat right now. So there's going to be more pressure on this blade once I heat treat and then really uh, harden this in the blade and then spring temper the uh, back spring. So once I spring temper the uh, back spring here, what it's going to do is make it a lot more springy and let have it have a memory to the so it's not just bending but it's going to remember to stay like this so no matter when you push up on it, it's going to snap back into that spot and then the blade being hardened is going to make this pivot spot harder so that it's going to push up onto the spring and not just dent or scratch into the blade like it would right now so this is the preheat treat uh, just test fit got all the pins in got the blade in got it ground a full flat grind on the blade so you can see So, just uh, heat treated them. That's what they come out like. You saw I did a uh, double quench on this guy. And A, that refines your grain structure a little bit. But the main issue is this back part um, of the pivot didn't get hardened the first time. So, I just had to do a second quench. Which, I mean, doesn't hurt in any. These weren't forged. They were made from stock removal. So, normalization and some other stuff wasn't as big of a deal. Since they already came annealed and normalized. And then here's your back, the back spring, which I hardened. So some tempering. This guy's going to get tempered. I want to say 400 degrees Fahrenheit, and for about two times for two hours. So double check. I have all this stuff written down. Yeah. So. Ten ninety five. Yeah, I'm going to temper at 450 um, degrees Fahrenheit for two hours, and then do that twice. And that'll uh, leave it in the upper 50s, probably like a 58 um, Rockwell hardness. And then this guy, I'm going to temper along with him, drag it down to like the 58 hardness. And then what I'll do is go ahead and clean it up um, with uh, sandpaper on the grinder and everything, get it into a nice satin finish again. So I can see what they're not a satin yet, but get it cleaned up so I can see clean steel. And then I'll take it over back to the forge and have the burner going real slow. And I'll just run it in and out of the blade and work a nice straw blue kind of color. Almost what the um, Dicom's uh, layout fluid looks like on steel. So, I'm really, so I'm going to almost go for a straw blue color kind of like this. 
across it, um, a nice deep blue. And that will take it to the upper 40s, lower 30s in the Rockwell hardness scale. So it will be hardened and then harder, or less hard than the steel. So it will be pushed up and be nice and springy. And this guy will be nice and hard. So the actual pivot area won't scratch. So sitting here, take that back to a bluish color. And just a quick trick. This isn't anything you know, super uh, scientific, should I say. I don't have a Rockwell hardness tester, uh, but a file is usually in the upper 50s to uh, yeah probably upper 50s on the Rockwell hardness. Most files are 1095 or W2. Um, the older ones are probably W2 or W1, but yeah, especially like Nicholson and stuff. And these guys um, are made to cut steel, so when you try to cut a hardened steel, you won't cut into the steel. And I have, yeah. Here's a good old um, Nicholson, American made Nicholson um, mill bastard file. And this is when they were making them, 1095, real well made before they moved uh, Nicholson over to Mexico for manufacturing. So this is an old American made one. And you can see, hear that, it just skating over, it's not cutting in. And for comparison, here's a piece of uh, W2. Which is very similar to 1095, or 1095, and you can hear you hear a very different uh, hear a different very different sound, and you can see it's putting a nice little chamfer on there. I'm taking it off, and then for comparison again, you hear a very different sound not cutting into it and the same here it's not cutting into it so these are hardened and they're harder than this file is what that's saying because the file can't cut into it and this being an old Nicholson mill bastard I'm gonna say it's in the probably 55 to 60 range somewhere in there I'm not 100% sure if you know you can correct me in the comments but I'm going to say it's somewhere in the, uh, somewhere between 55 and 60 as far as hardness. So that's saying that this is anywhere between 55 to, you know, 60 plus hardness right now. And then when I temper back down, I should end up in the upper 50s.